Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're back with another tier list and uh, I've already made two videos regarding tier lists before and they received uh, you know, plenty of positive feedback. So there's really no reason for me to stop making these at this point. Um, I actually got a, a suggestion from one of my last tier list videos. Someone in the comments said, hey, Hera, can you make a tier list about the best economical civilizations? And I said, you know, I thought about it a little bit. I said, finally, let's do it. It sounds like a good idea. Uh, and uh, the reason I chose to do you know this one amongst other good ideas is because for economy civs, you know I always hear pros talking about like oh this civ is really good because it has such a good economy or like you know uh, the economy of this civ allows it to be very flexible and well I was just wondering you know like it might not be obvious to all what it means to have a good economy because there's so many different economical bonuses in the game. And it's hard to understand, you know, how they stack up against each other. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to uh, do just that, which is to stack them up against each other and decide which civs are the best economical civs in the game. Uh, so right off the bat, I have to give you guys some criteria as to how I'm going to be grading this. Also, I have a second screen on this side, so I'm going to be looking here quite a bit. This is where I have my tier list up. So if you, if you think that's a bit weird, that's why. Um, so I, anyway, I have three criteria for uh, my grading, and then I have like a fourth kind of miscellaneous category. So the first criteria, it's going to be civs that receive uh, either extra villagers through some of their bonuses or have faster gather rates. Faster gather rates and extra villagers, you know what, we're going to throw in free resources at the start as well. For example, Lithuanians getting 150 food at the start. That's like one of my top priorities as a, uh, you know, as a indicator that it has a good economy. And the reason why I value those three points at, the, at my top priority, top grading list, is because having extra bills or having faster gathering or free resources uh, is the best economy bonus in the game, best kinds of economy bonus in the game, uh, simply because uh, it lets you do anything you want with those extra resources. So it actually makes your civ very flexible, uh, as opposed to, let's say, uh, a military discount like Byzantines, who uh, have cheaper trash, but don't benefit from that bonus if they're making knights at all, for example. Whereas a civ like uh, I, I don't know, Chinese will use those two villas at the start extra to do whatever they want with them, all right? Um, so that's my first first criteria, highest up on my list. My second criteria is going to be uh, civs that receive f uh, either free upgrades or discounted upgrades or discounted buildings. So for example, uh, Chinese get discounted uh, eco technologies that counts as you know the priority to uh, eco bonus, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and the reason why is because I feel like getting free upgrades or discounted upgrades is a, a direct saving um, for you to just you know tech into those units. And upgrades are very important and things we get every game. And so if you're getting, let's say, a free economy upgrade, it's something you would have gotten anyways or you would want to get anyways. So getting it for free just gives, it's basically another way of saying you have extra resources to spend elsewhere now. So that's my number two. Uh, and my third criteria is going to be discounts on military units. So again, I bring up the Byzantine trash units. Uh, they're cheaper as well as their camels. That is, in a way, an economy bonus because if you do tech into those units, you are saving resources and therefore you have a better economy. Uh, okay, then I have a fourth category here, which is kind of like miscellaneous. I'm going to put in like build time. So if, if for the, let's say the Spanish, they can build stuff faster. Well, that kind of gives them an advantage because they're saving built like villager time. So that's kind of an economy bonuses. Economy bonus. Uh, those are kind of like minor stuff. Okay, so miscellaneous category is going to be the minor stuff. That I'm still going to talk about in this video. All right, so we've talked a little bit about it. I have a couple changes that I made on the tier list uh, here on the screen. So first of all, I'll put a title on top. Let me know if you guys do like that. Just to remind you guys what the video is about. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just felt like it makes the you know this, the page look nicer. And I've also I removed for this video only. I removed the F tier because when I was making the tier list, there was no uh, there was no sibs that actually fit there. So. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this every time. I think the FTO is important for certain categories but, uh, or certain li lists, but for this one in particular, I didn't really need it. Okay, so without further ado, let's just hop into the list here. So at my first step in the S tier, I've got the Aztecs. So the Aztecs are uh, a really interesting one because it's not quite clear what their bonus does. It basically states that villagers gather an extra uh, five, you know, or sorry, villagers can gather an extra five resources. And... On paper, this doesn't seem like it's actually affecting much because gathering more doesn't. We don't really make the connection between gathering more and getting more. But in actual, like in, in fact, like uh, Aztec farmers, because they they gather more, they actually work faster. And you can test this out yourself in a scenario. Aztec farmers work significantly faster than your generic sieve. And also, 
um, for a lumber camp or for like for a woodcutter, if you carry more, that means you're just spending less time walking back and forth. So instead of chopping 10, walking, coming back, chopping another 10, you're chopping 15, walking, depositing it, come back, chopping 15. So you're getting extra resources and minimizing the water, the walking time pretty much. So the asset economy actually gets a huge boost from this. And I think it jumps them straight to S tier. I think a lot of pros will agree as well. Uh, next up, I've got to the Celts. Now the Celts benefit from faster wood chopping. I'm not sure about the exact percentage, uh, but I think it's like 15 or 20. Um, the reason I have Celts in S tier is because is because wood is the most important and plentiful resource on most maps and to have faster wood cutting is actually very beneficial and kicks in from the start from the start of the game from dark age you're cutting wood regardless of the strategy you're going to go for it so for example if if it's a stone if you gather stone 15 percent faster like the koreans that's not as good as chopping wood faster because first of all there's less stone on the map and second of all you don't always need to have stone in the early game but you always need to have wood in the early game. See what I mean there? So just that bonus for Celts, because it's on wood, makes them S tier economy sit for me. Uh, and uh, it just feels really smooth to play them in general. Next up, I've got the Chinese. Now, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, actually, Aztecs also get a free 50 gold. So that kind of, if you're unsure, that for me pushes them guaranteed to S tier. 50 gold at the start is not the biggest of deals, but it's something, it's a nice little bonus and it's, you know, something nice, extra. All right, for the Chinese, uh, they get and basically they start with three bills minus some resources. Once you do a standard Chinese start, by the time you hit feudal age compared to gener generic civ, you can have a two villager advantage. Having a two villager advantage from the start of feudal age, basically as soon as the game gets going, is one of the best things you can do because those two villagers will gather so many resources over time that it automatically kicks Chinese to like S your economy in my opinion, just getting those extra two villagers. But on top of that, Chinese also get discounts on all their technologies. 10% feudal, 15 in castle, and 20% saved in imperial age. This is such an insane bonus. It makes them extremely flexible. You're always going to be researching some form of technology. So this means like you're saving resources at every stage of the game. And you have two villagers extra to start. Chinese are right up there. SD for me, easy. All right, next up, we've got Khmer. Uh, now, Khmer are an interesting one. They used to be really bad with the economy. They have no bonus. However, they, in a recent patch, I think a couple months ago, uh, their farms no longer uh, require drop-off sites. Now, uh, again, this is the main thing this is doing is that it's actually uh, reducing walking time. And uh, so now your, your, you know, your farmer doesn't have to walk to the TC to drop the 10 food off. It just drops it one by one into your stockpile, kind of like a relic does for your gold. The reason this is so good is because um, like I said, it reduces the, the walking time. And so that jet just makes you generate more food, uh, for your time. And it also gives you the food immediately, which lets you then spend it immediately, which lets you invest into other things. So those two things, which is like getting, uh, getting more of it and getting it immediately makes this bonus amazing. And then it also has a third added bonus, which is the practicality of being able to farm from anywhere because it doesn't have to be near a mill or a town center, uh, you know, to get to drop the food. So that one bonus actually makes Khmer S tier for me. And uh, it's definitely a powerhouse sieve in the pocket position of a team game, for example, because of their strong economy. Next up, this is another weird one, actually. It's going to be the mines. I don't know what it is with these meso sieves, um, but their bonuses kind of make no sense. So for mines, I've got the exact percentage, but it basically states this. The resources last X percentage longer. I think it's 20% or 10%. Don't quote me. Anyways. I just call it X percent. So the resources last X percent longer. And what this does is it makes it so if you're gathering from a resource as the mine player, you will actually get more from that resource than a generic sieve. For example, let's say you start the game with a sheep as usual. A mine player will actually be able to gather 120 food, assuming it's 20%, 120 food from that sheep. Whereas a regular generic sieve only can gather 100 food. Of course, taking away the decay in this example. And so this does uh, plenty of things for the Mayan economy. Not only does it give you more food in the early game from your sheep and boar, it also gives you more gold, which is a, you know, pretty, a resource that is pretty valuable in the mid to late game. So it lets you have a lot more gold in you know, those later stages of the game and maybe have more gold than your opponents, which could let you easily win, if, win you a few games as well. It also makes your wood line more effective because of the same reason as Aztecs. If, you're, if, the wood, if the trees are lasting longer, that means less of them are being used, which means that you're not walking as far to go to the next tree, which means less walking time, which saves you resources. So 
Mines overall have such a smooth economy because of this one bonus. In fact, it's so strong that they had to reduce the work rate of main farmers because of it. So, um, you know, mine economy is just insane. Definitely S tier for me just because of that one bonus. It has so many uses. It's pretty incredible. All right, next up is going to be the Persians. So Persians kind of get a, a, like a two or three uh, layered economy bonus. So the first uh, economy bonus is that they get a free 50 food and free 50 wood at the start of the game. We talked about how strong free resources are and actually having free food and wood is way better than having the free gold like the Aztecs do because wood and food are more important in the early game. So right away, that's a really good economy bonus. Furthermore, um, they also get faster working town centers and faster working docks, which makes which makes you pretty much get more villagers and more fishing ships if there's water on the map, which is just an amazing advantage uh, to have on a sieve. And also their town centers working faster. It means that they advance the ages faster. Again, saving you town center time lets you bring out more and more villagers. So overall Persians, free food, more vills. Sounds like an S tier sieve to me. No, no questions there. Uh, next up, we're going to have the Slavs. Now the Slavs, they're similar to the Celts in the sense that they're getting a faster gather rate on a really important resource. Food, similar to wood, is imp incredibly important in the early game, and farms is something that pretty much on every map you're gonna have to make at some point in time. Um, so I think that the Slavs, uh, getting that 10% faster farming rate is actually one of the best economy, so it makes it one of the best economies in the game because um, we're always farming, and in the late game, you can go up to like 60 or 70 farmers uh, and Know, just having the 10% bonus on top of that many farmers just makes this bonus, uh, just makes this economy bonus just incredibly stronger than, say, a faster stone gathering. So, you know, Slavs and Celts, I think, are on the same kind of level with how strong their economy is because the resources they're gathering faster from is a really important one or are really important resources. All right, next up, I've got uh, the Vikings. This is actually the last S tier civilization. And, uh, well, the Vikings, they actually only get one eco bonus, uh, I believe, which is to get free wheelbarrow and free handcart. Um, free wheelbarrow, free handcart sounds like, oh, it's not that much. Like other civs get way more. But those, uh, I guess, eco bonuses are, or those two eco upgrades, sorry, are the best eco upgrades in the game. And they're just the most generic. They affect all types of resource gathering. And for Vikings, to get them for free, not only are they saving the, you know, the, the resources of investing into those re upgrades, but they're also saving the town center time. So by the time you're opposing, uh, you know, by the time your opponent gets wheelbarrow, that's three villagers extra that you have because you didn't need to research wheelbarrow yourself. You guys see what I mean? So not only do you get the wheelbarrow you know, right away from feudal age and you save the resources to get it, you're also saving the town center time and that results into more villagers later. So the Viking economy, because of all these three facts is actually amazing. And uh, the, the power you get behind this to be able to do like fast R bless and 1v1 is incredible. Uh, and also because of this good economy, it makes them one of the best, um, or yeah, one of the best water sieves and also a really strong pocket uh, civilization because they have such a good economy. Uh, okay, so that's gonna be it for my S tiers. As you can notice, a lot of the criteria in S tier is about that first thing, which is getting more bills or getting faster gather rates. Um, and also and another thing in you know, pretty much in common with all the S tier sibs is that their economy bonuses kick in from the very start or you know, they just last the longest. Like uh, farming, you're always gonna be farming. Celts, wood chopping, you're always gonna be cutting wood. Chinese, you start with two bills from the very start of the game. It's all about like very easy to use. As you go down the list, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a lot more you know, strong economy sibs, but very situational or a bit more risky to get the benefit from it. I'll, I'll explain what I mean as I go on the list. So. Uh, on A tier here, uh, we're going to have uh, to start it off with Britons. Britons get two economy bonuses. They get uh, sheep gathering faster. I believe it's 25% faster. Again, I could be wrong on these percentages, guys. Don't take it for granted, but I'm pretty sure uh, it's 25%. Regardless, they get faster sheep gathering. Uh, so that's the first bonus. Again, kicks in from the Dark Age. This on its own is not that good a bonus because there's not usually a lot of sheep on the map. But this is a nice eco bonus to get your start a little bit smoother and get you a slightly faster Dark Age and Feudal Age. Um, however, their big bonus, in my opinion, is getting the cheaper town centers as well. So those two, um, those two resources, or sorry, uh, those two bonuses in, in conjunction make them an A tier sit for me. Uh, not S tier because, again, you're not going to be building that many town centers. So uh, maybe not as good of a bonus as some of the S tier sieves. Um, but it's still up there, in my opinion, especially since they have two eco bonuses. Uh, the town centers, just to clarify, cost only 50% wood. The stone cost remains the same. 
Next up, we have probably one of the more interesting discussions here is going to be the cumins. Now, the cumins have potentially, if they're undisturbed, one of the best booms in the game. And by booms, I mean like they're just going for pure economical investments. Uh, having access to a second town center in Feudal Age is insane. However, it is kind of risky to go for the second town center in a lot of cases. For example, in 1v1, you can get uh, pushed with siege if your opponent goes for a faster castle age and then you're stuck defending in Feudal Age because you invest into that second town center, oh, sorry, uh, which makes it not as viable as some of the other eco bonuses. So while it has a lot of potential, it's also very risky. And um, so that's why I couldn't put it as S tier even though it actually could, could, could potentially be the best boom sieve in the game at the moment, if they're untouched. Uh, and the reason why having a second town center in Field Age is so good is because it results in a lot of extra villagers. And remember, the extra villagers is high up on my list of what makes a good economical sieve. So next up, we're going to have the Franks. Now, the Franks, kind of like the Britons, they benefit from two eco bonuses. First one is going to be an early game bonus. Their berries collect, I believe, again, 25% faster. Could be wrong. Uh, so get faster berries, which is, is nice in the Dark Age, helps get off to a smooth start and a faster start than some other sieves. And also, they get free farm upgrades. Yeah, so they get access to all three farm upgrades and they, they get them for free, which it's really important because those upgrades are typically stuff you get right away, like you get right away and you get uh, in most games. And so getting them for free saves you the resources and it lets them kick in right away. So Frank's definitely a tier for me with those two bonuses. Uh, next up we have Huns. Uh, Huns, uh, they are a weird one because they get the only eco bonus really is that uh, oh, Actually, they have two. Let me let me reiterate. They have two eco bonuses kind of First one is that they don't need any houses uh, Which saves them a lot of wood over the course of the game uh, and the second eco bonus that they have is um, That they have cheaper cow archers, which I, I know that that means they have to tech into cow archers to make any use of that but assuming they do they get a pretty Fair discount there, and uh, that saves them resources that they can invest into other things if they're going for cab archers. So, uh, Hunts benefiting from two eco bonuses there, potentially at least one with no houses, makes them an eight tier ship for me, uh, definitely. Next up, I have the Japanese. Now, the Japanese have two eco bonuses, but one of them only applies if there's water on the map. So, the first one, and this is the generic one on any map, is that their eco uh, drop off sites, so like mining camp, lumber camp, mill they all cost 50 percent less so instead of 100 wood they cost 50 wood now this is actually a really good early game bonus because if you think about a standard dark age you're making at least one lumber camp usually two you're making at least one mill and you're usually making a mining camp within mid feudal age as well that's potentially four buildings that you're making that if you have the japanese eco bonus there you're saving 200 wood from just like mid feudal age which is a lot of wood saved even more than the than the hound houses at that point in, in the game so uh, in my opinion, Japanese definitely deserve the top spot just because of that, in my opinion. But you know, on top of that, they also get uh, their fishing ships gathering faster. Um, and so if there's a water map, Japanese fishing ships are definitely uh, another huge economical bonus to the sieve. So Japanese, no doubt A tier, probably S tier on some water maps as well. Next up, we have Indians. And Indians also get two bonuses of economy here. Uh, one of them is a little bit more situational, though. So the first bonus, the generic one, is that their villagers cost less as the ages go on. Um, and so why this is such a good bonus is that you're always making villagers and um, so to save food throughout the whole game on an, an essential unit like a villager means that you're always going to be saving a certain amount of resource. And again, food is such a good, such an important early game resource that saving, <clears throat> excuse me, saving some of that is just incredibly valuable in of itself. Furthermore, Indians also have faster gathering shorefish. Uh, they also carry more shorefish as well with their villagers. So if there's ever shorefish on a map, Indians become S tier economy. But even on generic maps, they're still, in my opinion, A tier because of the food saved from their villagers. So really strong save economically here. Uh, next up, I've got the Malay. Now the Malay, kind of like Japanese, also have two economy bonuses. But the first one's a little bit more obscure and hard to, hard to understand. So they get... To, they age up to next age faster. Uh, so they go from dark age to feudal age faster than uh, your average sieve. And what this does is that it frees up your town center time, which lets you actually get a villager advantage. So just from going to, from dark age to feudal age, if you do that with Malay and with a generic sieve, Malay will have enough TC time to make an extra two villagers before the opponent gets to feudal age. 
So similar to Chinese, Malay will get to off, off to a two villager start from feudal age, all right? And that of itself is a strong uh, advantage right away. Um, and they also, Malay on water maps, get the infinite fish traps and the cheaper fish traps as well. So uh, they have they become absolutely insane on water maps as well. But even on the, your generic land, just having that faster age up lets you get more villagers out and lets you have a better economy and invest those uh, the work time of those extra villagers into anything you want. So it's a very flexible, very strong sieve for the economy. Probably goes up to S tier on water maps, but for all, you know, all situations, I'd say A tier is perfectly fine for them. And it's why this eco bonus is why they're good on maps like Arena, which uh, are closed land maps, and usually you wouldn't consider Malay a good land sieve, but they're actually quite good. Um, and when I say usually, I mean like the untrained eye. Okay, next up I've got the Malians. Now I debated actually to put the Malians in S tier because they get really strong bonuses here. First one is that they save wood on all wood buildings. This includes town centers, docks, military buildings, mining camps, lumber camps, everything. Except farms, they don't save on farms. And this bonus is so good um, because you're saving at all stages of the game an important early game resource or an important resource, which is wood. You always need wood, kicks in from the start. In fact, I think I'm gonna bump them to S tier. Like just the, when I'm talking about it right now, I'm just thinking how strong this actually is. And it's more saving than the hunt houses because hunt houses, like yes, you're saving the build time. Yes, you're saving a certain amount of wood throughout the game. But the Malians save on every building you, bu you build. And over time, I guess you have more potential to save with Malians than with Huns. So I think just based on that, I'd probably put them in S tier. But on top of that, they also have another bonus, which is to get the first gold mining upgrade for free. So... I think with both those bonuses, that's actually bumped into S tier together. So my first change to my builder, to my sorry, my tier list is Malians going to S tier. Yeah, saving wood on buildings and also getting that free gold money upgrade. Uh, Malians has one of the smoothest economies in the game. I think it's only held back because it has kind of awkward transitions between the ages. Uh, and I'm talking about Castle and Pure Age because they're lacking bracer. But other than that, they're such a strong civilization. Uh, all right, next up we have. Uh, Vietnamese. Wow, this is a name you would not really expect to see on the list, especially so high up. Um, Vietnamese recently got buffed, and their buff states that, or sorry, their eco bonus now states that uh, you do not require any wood for your economical upgrades. This includes wood upgrades, so double bit axe, bow saw, etc., uh, farm upgrades, horse collar, etc., and also wheelbarrow and handcart from the town center. It includes pretty much all eco upgrades. Um, and so, you know, now Vietnamese with that bonus are actually saving a few hundred resources, again, of wood, which is an important early game resource uh, throughout most of the early game stages. So uh, that brings them right up to the, with the very best, like Japanese who are also saving the same amount of wood uh, you know, via their, uh, their mining camps and lumber camps. So Vietnamese definitely deserve top spot here uh, in the A tier list. Um, yeah, I think they're really solid overall with their economy these days. Because those upgrades, you're, you're always going to get them anyway. You're going to want to get them in, if you're playing properly. And so just to save resources on those upgrades that you would get anyway, definitely makes for a top tier sieve. Uh, and for my last eight tier sieve, I've got... Ooh, whoa, the Teutons. Yes, Teutons actually making a list higher than average. Um, basically, Teutons get cheaper farms, uh, which makes them, uh, similar to some of the other sieves in the eight tier, save a lot of wood early game in. This bonus isn't as good as slab farming, which gets you know, which lets you gather more. Uh, it this just lets you save some wood, but just saving, I think I believe it's like forty percent savings on the wood. Anyway, the farm is now cost thirty six wood, so um, thirty six wood a farm instead of sixty is really strong. And farms is something you're going to be going to almost every game, so it's basically like guaranteed savings, which is a big theme of these strong economies. All right, next up for the B tier, we got Burmese. Now, Burmese get uh, free wood upgrades, so their double bit axe, bow saw, uh, two men saw, it all gets uh, given to them for free. And while I think this, this could be an A tier sieve, I was thinking about it as well. I, the reason I didn't put an A tier is because a lot of the A tier sieves, let's compare them to Franks, who get the free farm upgrades. Franks also get another eco bonus, which is the berries. Burmese don't. So I feel like just based on that, you can drop them to B tier. However, you can make a strong ar argument to put this in A tier as well. Um, I think this can go either A or B. I stuck it in B just because that's the only eco bonus they get, as far as I'm concerned. As far as I know, rather. Um, and so I think it's a really strong one because what upgrade you'll get every game. So saving the resources there is really good. Um, but again, it's just the one bonus. So I'd say you know, B tier is fine for them. 
Next up, we got Byzantine. Now, Byzantine actually don't get any like faster gathering bonus at all, but they do get discounts on three units, which is the Skirmisher, the Spearman, and the Camel. Also, this bonus, or this discount is actually quite hefty. Uh, and so I believe it's like 25 or 30% discounts. I think it's the 30% actually, which is really insane. Getting a 30% discount on three units is quite uh, quite relevant. And usually I'd say like, okay, you have to go into those units to actually make use of the discount. However, those three units are something that's going to very often. So uh, like there's not going to be really a situation in a game where you can't make skirmishers, spears, or camels. So that being said, I feel like Byzantine definitely deserve a top, a higher spot than some of the other military discount bonuses uh, on, the, on the list. All right, Ethiopians is going to be next. Now, Ethiopians, the only bonus they get for the economy is that they get an extra 100 food and 100 gold upon aging up. So when they get the Feudal Age, and when they get the Castle Age, and when they get the Imperial Age, they get 100 free gold and 100 free food. This results to a total of 300 food and 300 gold throughout the course of a game. However, the reason I didn't actually put this any higher is because although they're getting free free resources, they're getting them at weird times. Like, okay, the, the food and gold and feudal is nice, that really helps. But when you get to Castle Age and Imperial Age, 100 food and 100 gold isn't the biggest of deals. A lot of these other sieves are saving the same amount of resources earlier on in the game, and that is much more impactful. So uh, if the opens B tier, I'm pretty convinced. I don't think they need they, they can go any higher here. Next up on the list is going to be the Goths. Now, Goths, similar to uh, Byzantine, don't really get any eco bonus that makes them gather anything faster, except they're bo they actually like kill hunt faster with the villagers, but that's really negligible. Um, but they get a big discount on the infantry, and this is something I have to address. Um, now, while, again, the same argument can be made that, oh, you only get the discounts if you're making that unit, but Goths can only make infantry. Like, it's their only viable option, right? So... You're for sure going to make some infantry for playing as the Goths. Therefore, this bonus kicks in pretty much from the start of the game. And it's a pretty hefty discount. Um, they changed it recently. It now increments. I believe it starts Dark Age at 20%, Feudal at 25%, Cast Age 30%, and Imperial Age 35% discount on all infantry units. So for me, this is enough of a bonus to put them up at B, uh, at B tier. Because they're saving like Byzantine on three units. The Spearman, the Champion Line... Uh, sorry, the Halberdier line, Champion line, and the Husk Roll, which is the, the unique unit. So, three units you're saving on. That seems pretty good to me. A B tier for sure. Uh, okay, looking at my list here, the next up is going to be the Italians. Italians gets two eco bonuses, kind of. One on water and one generic. The generic one is that they advance the ages, or to advance the ages, it costs less resources. I don't remember the exact percentage, and I'm not going to try and guess it. Uh, I think it's 15%, actually. Uh, so advanced ages cost 15% cheaper. Again, in the comments, if I mess up any of these percentages, just correct me. I I'd love to know the real ones here. I know I could check myself, but checking for 35 civilizations is a lot. Um, so yeah, 15% savings for going up to the next age. This saves you a, a couple hundred resources uh, every so often, kind of like the Ethiopian bonus. It reminds me of that one. You're not really getting them all at once. Like you only save 75 food from going from Dark Age to Feudal Age. And so... That's not a whole lot. Other sips are saving way more. However, the reason I put them at B tier is because they also have a, a, a water bonus, which is that they save 50% on all um, dock text. This bonus is actually insane. Like, Italians become S tier on water maps. But because their bonus on land map is kind of weak, and I wanted this to kind of be like a overall um, comparison of economies, I put them at B tier. Again, you can, make, you can make an argument for A tier based on just the average there, but I think B tier on, on land... S tier on water. Seems good to me. Okay, um, so Italians next up is going to be the Koreans. Koreans actually get uh, two bonuses. The first one is that they collect stone a certain amount of percent fa faster. I think it's God, I think it's 20% faster that they're collecting stone. I could be wrong. Correct me guys. 15 or 20% faster stone collecting is what I think it is. And the reason why this is not such a good bonus is because stone is the resource that runs up the, the fastest on most maps. So you actually can't make use of that bonus that much before the stone runs out. Uh, and also stone is not really necessary in a lot of cases in the early game. So it's not something that you're going to be saving right away. It's something that kicks in a bit later. So that bonus is not very impressive. But the impressive bonus is the second one, which makes them save a certain amount of wood for, uh, for all their wood units. So they're saving like, I think it's 15 or 20% wood on all wood units, except siege. This makes them save wood on their wagons, which is the unique unit. Skirmishers, archers... 
um ships all ships they save wood on so that bonus is actually very nice and uh, definitely spikes them to b tier uh, in conjunction with the stone mining you can maybe make an argument to a tier but i think they're kind of like byzantine where uh, you actually need to be making units to start making use of the economy saving or the resource saving okay that's gonna be koreans and the next step is going to be all of a b tier is the mongols now the mongols have one of the best early game uh, eco bonuses in the game Dark Age, which is that they gather hunt 40% faster. This was changed from 50% recently, so I'm sure about that. 40% faster hunt, so on deer and boar, uh, gives them one of the best Dark Ages and one of the fastest starts in the game. And although they're not making use of this throughout the game, because boar and deer run out usually really fast and will finish by the time feudal kicks in, but it's such a strong early game advantage uh, and can snowball into so many other advantages that I have to give them B tier for their economy. Just because of how much potential this has. Giving you a faster feudal edge can lead to a faster scout rush, which can lead to you just ending the game right then and there. So, uh, honestly, definitely a B tier sit for me, just because of how early that bonus is kicking in and how strong it kicks in. Um, doesn't matter if their economy after that is quite weak, that alone makes them a B tier sit for me. Okay, my last tip on the B tier here is going to be the Saracens. Uh, where are you at? Saracens. And uh, well, this is a really weird one, to be honest, because. They actually don't get any eco bonus except for the fact that they get a market uh, or better prices at the market. Now, it's a little bit tricky to use this one, I will, I will admit. And not everyone will find it uh, the same impactful. But basically, their market costs 100 less wood. So it costs 75 wood instead of 175. But not only that, they also get way better deals at the market. So their base price to sell 100 food will give them uh, uh, 95 gold back. A generic save will only get 70 gold back. So uh, just that kind of really good prices can make that market one of the best eco bonuses in the game in certain situations. That being said, you don't always want to use the market. But, so it, it is a bit more situational. But I decided to put them at B tier because if you do use the market, you can base your entire strategy around that. You can just mine all gold, build, like put all your bills on gold. We've seen Tato do this countless times, even in tournaments. And so you put all your bills on gold, then you buy your food. Uh, you can also put all your bills on stone, sell the stone, and then buy food. And so simply because of how powerful this strategy could be, I had to put them on the B tier, uh, even though it's not as obvious as other bonuses on the, on the list. All right, next up we have the C tier. If the C tier sits, I've got Berbers as the first one. Berbers get faster moving villagers. Now, this kind of like Aztecs in the sense that it reduces your walking time. Since your villagers move faster, you are spending less time walking and more time gathering resources. This also helps their farms a lot. Um, kind of like why Wheelbarrow helps the farms, gives them extra gather rate and faster movement. This faster movement from Berbers helps the farms a little bit and helps you spend less time walking and more time gathering for let's say uh, your lumber camp and your mining camps for your gold. And so, um, you know, Berbers, just because of that bonus, it's not a huge deal, but it's enough to put them at C tier for me. Next up we have the Bulgarians. Now Bulgarians only get to one eco bonus, I believe, um, which is their town centers costing 50% less stone. So their town centers, instead of, cost, instead of costing 100 stone, they cost 50 stone. Now the reason, like this sounds really good in theory, but the reason it's not that good is because um, like stone isn't really that important of a resource. Um, and okay, let me rephrase this, let me rephrase this. There's not a whole lot of things you can spend your stone on. So saving stone doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually using that stone that left over to invest into other things. Does that make sense? For example, saving wood on a town center with like the Britons, you spend that wood to make two farms. Bam, that's an investment immediately showing a reward uh, or showing a return. But that 50 stone that you save for the Bulgarians usually just sits in your stockpile. So uh, for that reason, I put them a C tier that it could be really useful in cases where you wanna go like four or five town centers, then you can make them without actually gathering stone. But a lot of times the stone just remains left over. I think the best part of this bonus is the fact that you can make a tower in Feudal Age and then still make a town center in Castle Age without having to mine extra stone in case you get towered or something like that. That's the Bulgarians for me at C tier. Next up I got Incas, kind of the same reason. They save a bit of stone on their towers or on all stone buildings. So towers, castles, and town centers. And this results into obviously saving stone for other things. Uh, but again, same reason as Bulgarian stone doesn't really translate into other buildings as much as other resources, uh, or as into other units or buildings as much as other resources. So usually that stone ends up just being left over. 
Uh, however, for the case of Incas, they also get a free Llama at the start, and they also get uh, houses uh, giving them plus 10 population space. Sorry, plus 5 population space. So you basically need only half the houses uh, as Inca players. So I think those two bonuses in conjunction make them a C tier sieve, potentially even a, a B tier sieve, actually. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, they get three bonuses there. The Llama, which helps early game, houses, which is kind of like half the hunt bonus, and uh, also getting the stone discount. You know what? I think that's a B tier sieve to me. I talked myself into it. So that's the second sieve I changed, boys. All right, not too bad. Next up, we got the Lithuanians. Uh, this one. <laughs> Lithuanians, um, the only bonus they get is that they get 150 free food at the start. Now, it's only 150 food. However, you are getting it at the start. So it's a really good boost to the early game and can help you do some cute stuff on water maps, which is to just go straight to wood and use the extra food to continue making villagers. So that bonus, because you're getting it right away from the start, actually becomes pretty strong. The reason it's not higher up on the list, though, is that that's all they get. And they don't really get any other discount or something like that. So for me, see it's here for the economy for the Lithuanians. Portuguese is next up. I believe they save 15% gold on all their gold units. Kind of like the Korean bonus, which is saving wood. But saving gold is actually not as good in the early game as saving wood. However, I do agree that um, saving gold is better for late game. And that's why I put them as C tier instead of anything lower. Uh, although I don't think they belong lower. I think C tier is fine. Um, there's tons of units that cost gold. And even though 15% gold is pretty marginal, you're still saving it throughout the game on pretty much anything you go for. So for that reason, I think C tier is pretty fine. Uh, also, I just realized I missed a couple bonuses. For example, the Chinese, um, for their town centers, they... Uh, can house 10 population instead of 5 and also for the Slavs they get cheaper siege so that's another reason why Slavs are an S tier for me. Just thought I'd point this out I didn't forget, or I forgot in the moment I remembered now. Okay uh, next up for the C tier we got the Tatars now the Tatars get uh, their sheep last 50% longer I believe is the case so they're getting more food out of their sheep uh, it's not the biggest bonus and it's like I can't place them higher than C tier because Sheep run out really fast, so it's more or less like a Dark Age slash Early Feudal Age bonus. But I think it's it's a nice boosted economy, and it definitely keeps them above the D tier. You'll see the D tier sieves are not the best either. The last sieve in the C tier is going to be the Turks. Now the Turks save, or sorry, the Turks get 15% faster gold mining. Um, so it's kind of like the Kelp bonus, except instead of wood, it's for gold. I believe it's 15%, I could, I could be wrong. Um, but the reason why it's not as good to have a gold bonus is because kind of like stone for the Koreans, it runs out really fast. Or not really fast, a, you know, a bit slower than stone. But it's definitely not as much gold as there is wood on most maps. And so for that reason, uh, Turks are just not the best economy bonus sieve because that's all they get. However, it's a nice, you know, boost your economy. And it kind of reminds me of the Portuguese bonus as well, where you're saving some gold. In this case, you're saving it on, on, uh, when you're making military units. And in the Turks case, you're actually just gathering it faster which in my opinion is slightly worse than the, than the Portuguese bonus, but still, you know, a decent one. And for my D tier sieves, we have bonuses that are either extremely situational or negligible. So for Magyars, uh, you're saving, the only eco bonus they get, the only saving they get is on their scout line. They cost, uh, I don't know the percentage, your scout costs 68 food instead of 80 food. So I think it's something like 15%. So saving 15% on your scout line, only comes into play if you're going scouts and then if you're going scouts like if it's best case scenario you're only saving 12 food a scout which is not that much you're gonna need to make like 20 scouts for that to really kick in so it's not a bad bonus for the late game it definitely helps them out and for the early, super early game but it's not uh, on par with other bonuses uh, in my opinion and of, obviously it's situational in the fact that you have to be making scouts next up is going to be for the last uh sieve here the spanish the only eco bonus they get lands in the miscellaneous category, the fourth one I named, which is they get faster build time on all their buildings. I believe 33%, might be 25%. Um, and so, you know, the Spanish actually just don't really save that much uh, at all because of this bonus. Uh, they're saving just some, vi some villager time, but that's not really on par with a lot of these other civilizations. However, I will say that in team games, um, Spanish actually spiked to maybe A or S tier because they get the faster trade as the team bonus. This actually makes them incredibly strong on team games. So based on that, I don't know if you guys want to count that. If they did get that, I would have to put them as maybe not S tier, but maybe like A or B tier. Maybe I should put them in A tier because of that. 
Um, I'm going to put them in B tier overall because of that. So for the 1v1, they're not that impressive, but team games have become one of the best eco bonuses in the game because getting faster trade not only helps you tons, it also helps your teammates, and gold is, of course, the most important resource in the late game. Trade wins games. Spanish helps you trade. Therefore, Spanish wins games. Um, terrible logic, I know, but it's a really important bonus in my opinion. So anyways, that's going to round up our tier list for the best economical bonuses or best economical sibs in the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys like the you know, nice little changes I made to the to the to the screen. Also taking away the tier list. I hope that or taking away tier rather. I hope that I didn't really change the video too much. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see for the next tier list video, and whether or not you do want to see another tier list video. I don't want to be overdoing these. I don't want to be boring as to death. But I do enjoy doing them myself, and I hope you guys enjoy them as well. So, um, you know, hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're almost done the 30 days of YouTube, by the way, so we're getting we're getting there. All right, bye bye.